Let's talk some hoops, kid. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Baylor brought to you by FanDuel. We're talking ball today. I'm Kim Stewart, your host. Brandon McKinnon, the ultimate knower of ball, is here with me today because, Brandon, as we are recording this, we are two weeks out from the start of Baylor men's basketball. Just tell me the excitement that is flowing through your veins in this all-exciting football season for us. Yeah, I I wish that... I can feel I had, it already. I yeah, I wish it. that I had a higher-res camera on my company-issued laptop because the goosebumps are are there, um, just from you talking about that. Yeah, the hair is standing up. Um, yes. No, it's... I mean, the fact that we are, like, actually, per the calendar, two weeks away. Like it's, it's not just days. hey, by the foot, time, like by the time this is hitting, the pike, like we're here. Yes. Yeah, by the time this feed is hitting the inner ear of the listeners, or I, if you're watching on YouTube, um, we are 13 days away from Baylor tipping it off in South Dakota in that funny little cute, awesome, rustic throwback He's gym against Pentagon. Auburn. Against Auburn, which is so strange because it's like. We're doing this on a Tuesday, and last year it was like a huge event, Gonzaga, Saturday, primetime, and now it's we're going to have a major non-conference matchup to start the season on a Tuesday. It's It feels strange, yeah. but it feels really good. What do you think? I'm excited for it. It is weird to start with a big game. like It's not like mm-hmm. football in that sense. You do get some early on, especially with these Scott Drew teams, but yeah. it is kind of exciting to, you know, see so many new bodies going in there and being like, yeah. we're going to learn a lot first night. It's This is not going to be the finished product of this team, but it's mm-hmm. not like last year when you beat Mississippi Valley State by 100 and you're like, yeah, this team's going to the national championship. But we already knew that, right? So you do you do get to learn a little bit more. Bruce Pearl's still over there at Auburn. And this is a weird thing. We're going to have like a mini rivalry with Auburn here. Yeah. We've got them in basketball to open the season. We play them in football next year too. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know, a little something going on. I am I am so excited. Are we at Auburn next year, or are they coming to Waco? I think it's at Auburn next year, if that I'm not mistaken. Sense. No football, though. We're I'm shutting shutting that down. Yeah, we're, we have football. to shut down football for a day. We, yeah. we need a break from it. Um, I need a bigger break from it, but you guys like it. Um, but talking about basketball, and yeah. I mean, how, first off, how do you feel about having that test right out of the gate? It's not something we see often. Yeah, it's it's super interesting because even last year when we had a, a really solid non-conference slate, even with like some of the preseason tournaments and stuff like that in November, it we still did start with a little bit of an easier team, right? Like sure. you said, Mississippi Valley mm-hmm. State, and I think did we hang a hundred? I think we did. Yes, that wasn't the did. scream game, was it? Was that the? Scream I think game? it was. I think it was. I it remember was we were sitting, we were sitting in the press section. We were just like, "This is this is a high volume," and it was awesome. It, like, was, it was very cool. loud. Yeah. And it was louder than any feral game outside of like the big Monday, truthfully. Easy. And that's not an indictment on the fans. I'm I've never been that guy. It's like fans show up and people know who I'm probably referencing. We um, like that but to it, happen, but yes. <laughs> yeah, and and they do, which is good. Like I think that the product of the feral center is good, and the product of the foster is going to be good. It's but that stadium really was good, crazy yeah. loud. Um, I I digress. To answer your question, I think it's I think it's very exciting because to some extent, like there were new faces all over the court last year. Mm-hmm. And when we bushwhack Mississippi Valley State, it's like, oh, yeah, natty. Like, natty. especially because the last Charming. game we had watched was the UNC almost comeback game like two years ago. Um, and so it's like I just needed a I needed a fresh taste of Baylor basketball and beating a team by 50 is nice. But it almost felt like a little bit of fool's gold. Like, I yeah. think there were a lot of things going on with the team. And I know we're going to talk about that in the second segment. Um, there were a lot of things going on with the team that maybe weren't like, hey, this is an elite roster last year. Mm-hmm. This year, I think it's going to be cool to play a, a legitimate power five team that goes to the Natty or to the uh, March Madness almost every year. They're rarely in the NIT. Bruce Pearl, perennial, just elite coach. Yeah. Long Matty time. Pru, big alumni, previous Bachelor contestant. Shout out to our uh, reality TV fans. Shout out. Um, and it's like, we're going to know pretty soon. Like, That's we're going to know like. by the first media timeout, like, does this team have the stones to go out there and grind every right. day? And I think they do. Like, by all all accounts that we've seen on Twitter, like, this team actually has dogs. And I'm, 
I'm stoked. I'm ready. I'm ready to rock. Because it's usually just like toxic positivity. Like what else oh, are yeah. we going to say after that game to open last year other than yes, yeah. Baylor's going to win the national championship? And to be fair, yeah. we did we did kind of think that. We thought that was a final yeah. four team. Um, but then you find out things later on when you play Virginia and Marquette. And uh, Anyway, yeah. it's good to get that to start. And so Baylor coming in at 20th. And the coaches and you also have good tape. Sorry, last thing on the like good thing to start. You also have good tape to watch. Sure. Because I mean, when you're sitting in a film session and everybody's just like, Man, we all look awesome. Yeah. Like or even when things don't work, but they work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This was bad defense, but the guy blew a layup. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you don't really learn that. Oh, well, look at the transition play. Yeah. 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 So it's like having good tape to be like, hey we had a four minute stretch that was less than good. And that's going to actually sink look us at against... this. It, yeah. And yeah. now and it's like, instead we, of saying it's going to sink us against a better team, you actually see it happen. Right. And yeah. it's like, okay, now we can practice with a purpose early in the year versus like, Hey, you know, we hung a hundred who care not, not saying the guys were like, who cares? Cause I don't think that was the case, right. but you now have like tangible stuff to work on early, which I think is great. Yeah. And, and looking at this season, 20th in the coaches poll, Mm-hmm. seventh in Ken Palm, which Ken Palm knows ball. Um, yeah. What were your initial thoughts on that when that came out last week? I, I I felt, and I did an episode about it, that that was slighting Baylor a little bit. Yeah, and I agreed. I listened to that episode and was like stuck in Austin traffic, nodding my head like, yeah. Yes. Cook, Cam, cook. Plus one, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I I mean, I... I think we see like the Ken Palm or excuse me, the, uh, the AP poll and the coaches poll. We see those things kind of come more. In line it was with, the like, AP. By the way. And, I think I said coaches. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. It was the, it was the AP poll. Yeah. We, we see those things come more in line with like Ken Palm and Evan Maya, like the more analytics driven, like actual predictive stuff, looking at and breaking down lineups and things of that nature. We kind of see the, the hype and the smoke of AP and all the big names and stuff kind of fizzle. And so I expect Baylor to finish more in like that eight to 13 range. I know that's only five teams, but that's 20% of the poll. Right. Um, So I think Evan, Evan Maya had us at 11. Ken Palm had us at seven. I think that's more in line with where we are um, because I think because we didn't get the big sexy transfer name, like a Hunter Dickinson, the AP is like, Oh, well they only added, Jaden Nunn, Ray J. Dennis. Right. They, they got some added, pretty good ones, but yeah. not a sexy name. Yeah. Yeah. Ray, and or, Ray um, J. Let, the guy uh, from North Dakota State. Um, yeah. Grant Nelson? Grant Nelson. Yeah. Grant Nelson. And we yeah. were on his finalists, and then they lose out on him. And it's like, well, 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 already yes. we kind of have a full roster. So exactly. Yeah. And the perspective around it is you didn't get the marquee guy. It's like, right. well, we kind of did. We got what we needed. Like we didn't need Winks. We needed a guy that was going to come in day one and be our, be our point guard. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm much more confident that we'll be like, I think we're going to be a three seed in the tournament. And I think whoever like has that three seed in their side of the bracket is going to be like, damn, because I would think that would be more a testament to the big 12. Yeah. Like like you could, I mean, Baylor could be a, a one seed playing as a three. Yeah. Yeah. And I would not be surprised if we won the big 12 and, you know, mm. earned a one oh, seed and earned a one seed. But like, if you're looking at roster construction right now, expectation, I think it's j- just as conceivable for guys to play above the expectation that we have mm-hmm. and us win the big 12, hang a banner in the foster in year one, yeah. get a one seed as it is to be like, Hey, we're going to go out there and play where we think and play to projections. We'll be a three seed. We'll beat some great teams. And then like, we're going to be hell to play in March. Yeah, and I think that's like it's it's a weird kind of situation to be in because the Big Twelve is so good. Like when I was mm-hmm. mad, upset at the rating, I'm like, uh, in terms of Big Twelve, like on paper, Kansas is better. They've got the star yeah. power. Um, Houston has been an excellent program over the last couple of years. They look real good on paper too. Like I'm not, I'm fine being behind those excellent. two. But I think you can have four teams in the top ten from this conference. That's that's just me. But anyway, I mean, Baylor's got some things they need to work on We're I, from I last so year, I should say, uh, mm-hmm. because it was kind of a disappointing end to things. So we're going to go over that here in this second segment here. But first, we have to hear from a word from our sponsor of today's video. Today's episode of Locked On Baylor is brought to you by Jace Medical. When you need peace of mind, when you're leaving the home, there is no one better to do it 
than Jace Medical with the Jace case. The Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. So when you need that peace of mind, when you're going out camping or even just going on a vacation, going to a football game out of state, Jace case is what's going to give you that peace of mind. It offers customizability for your case with dozens of add-on medications, and you're going to choose the ones that best fit you and your family's unique needs. And they're continually working to expand their medication offerings. And in those recent efforts, they've added ivermectin as an option for the Jace case as well. They will also, Jace Medical will make sure that you're getting the ongoing treatment as you go. And they have gift cards. So you can buy a gift card for family and your loved ones so they can get a Jace case of their own. All you need to do is go to jacemedical.com, enter the code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on, L O C K E D O N, at Jace. That's J A S E medical.com. Wow. Impeccable ad reading skills there. Brandon. <laughs> Coming off the second year in a row that the Bears yeah. go out in the second round, the first weekend of the NCAA tournament, and we're left watching the last two or three on the couch. So when that happens yeah. against um, Creighton last year, mm -hmm. it, obviously your expectations changed throughout the season, but what did that feel like after them going out, considering what we were saying after the first game of the season? Yeah, it felt like I just watched college basketball the rest of the way in March Madness solely to place and lose bets and not root for any team. Um, was it a disappointment? It like. Was it a yeah, disappointment? It I'll tell you who it wasn't, my the book. Um so <laughs> yeah, I I the like book wins this one. Yeah, as always. Um but no, like in in reality, I think when we saw that draw in that region, you me and Drake um did that that pod with the three of us together, like mm -hmm. breaking it down. And we were like, if we can beat Creighton, if that is who we play in round two, and we can beat them from a matchup yeah. standpoint, that is our hardest matchup. It like, was such a weird place seat. to be in. It's yeah, that is our hardest matchup. If we can beat them, we are going to the final. Because I was like, I conference. I will love our chances against Alabama, the one oh, seed yeah. in that region. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. But yeah. it, it it was it was almost like if we don't have the versatility to get past to Creighton then this is bad news anyway. But if we yeah. do, this is a team that can legitimately go to the final four. Yeah. But a big reason why we, I think we were all not optimistic was because of the depth on the front court and because of performance in the front court yeah. and Creighton having, um, Oh my goodness. My brain is a big not guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember his uh, name. Hot burner. Um, there you go. Right? Yeah, yeah. I remember something weird. I'm, I'm having to like pull, Name, you know, get my brain we've, in college. We've tried to block this out a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to fair. get my my rosters back in my head. I need to like go and go into the lab. But we knew it was like, yo, this is gonna be a tough matchup. We're not trying to talk bad about players, but like Flo looked like an older college basketball player. He didn't have the same pop. EJ was still coming back from the knee injury. It was honestly a miracle he was playing. Josh playing that big of minutes as a true freshman was really difficult as well. He probably still had to put some weight on. He had still only been playing basketball for like three or four years. Like there were all these things where it's like the potential in our front court between EJ and Josh and flow playing up to final four flow from the natty year is like possible. But I think the reality is what we had seen all season where we didn't go protect the rim. We didn't yeah. crash the offensive glass. One of the worst teams in the paint either way. Yeah. In, in the whole country, defensively yeah. and offensively, and rebounding, especially yeah. both offensively and defensively, just just terrible. And I think that's a that's important for a team with mm -hmm. as many shooters as they did. For sure. You you gotta have offensive rebounds and kickouts. I mean, that right. was the big I think that was probably the biggest factor in the 2021 team. They were dominant yeah. in every facet, but yeah, you especially saw that in the tournament when you have a guy like Mark Vidal who's just gonna grab rebounds and kick out to open shooters, this team is unbeatable. Did and you I think watch, that same mold is still unbeatable. Yeah, I think so too. Did you? This is a, a bit of an aside, but did you watch the uh, the YouTube link that I tweeted like three or four nights ago? No. About, I'll I'll send it to you, but it was a eleven minute video, and it was just titled "All of Baylor's Highlights from the National Championship." Oh, I've Texas. for sure seen that. Yeah, and it was like eleven minutes of from when we played Hartford all the way until Gonzaga, and it was like. Oh, 
pretty much every shot that went in or defensive play that was made. I was <laughs> just like, so oh my for. god. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like cold towel and new pair of pants. Um yes. it, was, it was wild. So no, but to your point of like the front court side of things, I think this year's team has the making and like the bodies to withstand that because a lot of the time front court depth or lack of front court production comes down to like, that is a very physical position to play. Um, Mm. And so that's why you see guys get banged up and not perform and, you know, it's tiring. And so I think with Eve Misi, with a full off season of uh, everyday John, I don't know if you've seen his photos lately, but wow, guy looks good. Yes. Um, Looks good. Looks like Josh Ocean, full season, full year in the program. Like, there's a lot to like about those three guys kind of spearheading the front court. And I think, I think just the experience is going to be good. So I think it's going to be, we're going to be in a much better place because we still have shooters. Like that's still going to happen. Sure. I mean, that's the thing. The mold is still there. I mean, it's obviously not the mm-hmm. 2021 national championship team, but that yes. is still the way they're going to play offensively yeah. anyway, and hopefully defensively mm-hmm. getting back to it. Cause that was the big drop off last year. And yeah. speaking of Josh O um, in particular, that's a guy who you said it. He was rushed into a role last year. I mean, you could tell how raw he was. Super raw. Uh, we obviously haven't seen much of the tape to see what he's like mm. right now, but how important is it for him to just continue to polish? I mean, we saw it with mm. with um, with EJ too in the national championship season that he was just yeah. a huge jump from from yeah. year one to two um, and what we saw out of him. So. How important is that for Josh O to make that kind of jump like the big men we've seen in the past? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you referenced the EJ piece from the national championship run. And when I Freddie Gillespie was another one I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tristan Clark before he got hurt and transferred, Mm -hmm. like really solid. Um, Josh O has a little bit different game than all those guys. I would say it's probably more closely aligned with Everjay John's type, like Gillespie and Clark were big post up guys. Um, where like every day John was more of a lob threat. Then when I, when I interviewed uh, John last year, I asked him like the first thing I said, I was like, look, I'm not trying to bring up the injury. That's not what we're doing, but I want to know in the national championship year, how cool did it feel coming out every, every time out where they were like, Hey, we're going to run the pick and roll lob play. And it's a free two points. Like that's just going to happen. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm sure you remember it was literally like we would come out of a timeout yep. Davion or Jared. Cause Macy would be in the corner as the bailout guy in case they mm-hmm. covered the pick and roll. Well, if they like dropped, we were kind of cooked, but if they tried to pinch our ball handlers every day, John was open immediately. And it was just like a free two points. And he laughed and he was like, he was like, yeah, we knew that was going to work every time. And I was just like, that's incredible. So to your point about Josh, it's like if Josh, a lot of the stuff that was tough last year was like footwork, in my opinion. Like I'm mm-hmm. not a coach, I'm not a professional, yeah. but just watching a lot of tape. And that's and that's one of the, the last scoring. things to come around for sure when mm-hmm. you're learning the sport, yeah. especially as a big man. Yeah, he had moments where you're like, oh my God, like the touch is crazy, like just instinctual athletic stuff that he did. And then he had moments where you're like, I – have you have you like has set he played a, basketball yeah have have you set a screen <laughs> to be and rude. like open and like reverse pivot opened and rolled and like caught a, you know it's like right and i think a lot of that is just lack of time like he was he came in and you know i think they were like john was still out right like josh mm-hmm. was a rotational big and a lot of times early minute rotational big right away so i think that's going to pay dividends i think he's going to be more polished and like you said we've seen no tape we haven't had the you know, the global jam, we didn't get to see any of the games in Italy. We saw clips on Twitter. Um, but I think everything I've heard is that he's in a much better, um, much more confident player. I'll say not bet. I'm not going to say better to take right. away from performance, but he's much more confident in his game. And I think it's a good thing. And he's one of the guys that should you just have to look out for this year. You need to see mm-hmm. an improvement out of him. And this is he, hot take kind of yeah. in my opinion i think he is a a potential for big 12 defensive player of the year i think he could lead Love the conference that. in blocks i think he can lead the conference in blocks truly v- that would be very much jonathan john Chachua type of type of rise wouldn't it yeah like i think he could one defensive player yeah. of the year yeah. yeah and so that that's a unit that needs improvement and mm-hmm. um this is a good segue to talk about that next week we are going to be doing full previews here in all the position groups. So that's going to be front court, back court with the wings in between there. And mm-hmm. this is the one I'm most interested in just because, you know, they've got a lot of talent. The other one, it's not that they don't have talent yeah. in the front court, but it's something that really sunk them last year and yeah. hoping that's not the case. Um, exactly. Here to yeah. Take that next step once again and get out of the first weekend for sure. Yep. Passion, drive, and patience. 
What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, they called me all those things in high school. eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions do apply and eBay guaranteed fit only available to U S customers. So talking about the front court as a little bit more of an emphasis, uh, but Mm -hmm. we'll have the full front court episode next week. And thinking about that, because I I, I say that to preface, I want to know who the leader is going to be on this team. It's been, it's been pretty Mm -hmm. set the last few years. Obviously the championship team was, was all guys coming back and then, the next year you had, you know, half that team coming back, most of them role players, not starters. Yeah. And then and then a guy like James Akinjo who comes in and can really lead the offense. And last year it's an Adam Flagler type. This mm-hmm. year, <laughs> yeah. who are we left mark. with to lead this locker room? Yeah. So as backwards as it sounds to the leader question, I actually think it's gonna be really so we have we still have Jonathan Chamochachua mm-hmm. from the national championship team. And I think that's it. If I'm not that mistaken. would be it. Yeah, Love Day That's transfer. Uh, yeah, Turner. I don't. I don't know. If Turner's, Turner's at back. Louisiana Tech. Right. He um, left. So Love that's Day's probably at Stanford, it. Yeah. LJ's at U of H. Adam draft. Yeah. So and that's, that's got. It, and right? that's got to be big for Chum Wachachua. By the way, that he is involved the whole offseason. Yep. Right. I mean, last yeah. year, obviously, through no fault of his own, but he's doing but, individual rehab. He's around yep. the team, I'm sure, whenever he can. But now he's literally in every yep. drill. So I, I have to imagine that would help. Yeah. So that's so that's where I'm going. I think it's actually going to be incredibly refreshing to not have hangover is the wrong word, but just lingering impact, if you want to call mm-hmm. it that. But not having people, and I'm not and not to speak ill of any of those guys. That's not what I'm doing. But I just I imagine that from an emotional and a locker room standpoint, it's like, hey, this is not. We all have done this. We all have won a natty. Right. right. This is the way. It's like all of the fresh faces are going to be huge. So I think John's going to be a natural leader because he has been there. Um, But I also think that he's not going to be a guy that because he wasn't like the guy on those teams, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think John, and then I think just naturally like Ray J Dennis is going to step into that role. He was the leader for Toledo primary ball handler, primary score, an incredible facilitator and a great on ball defender. So I think just like naturally that is going to happen. Um, and I also way, like a Kinjo when he came in D- different yes. style of game, but mm-hmm. both floor generals. Yeah. Yeah. Floor. I think he'll be, it has to go through general. them. Yeah. Right. And then I think the other two guys that if you're like, okay, who are going to be guys in the locker room that we know everybody loves that we know are respected and that have been there to maybe like help take some of the transfers or new guys under their, under their wing. And that's not trying to be a pun intended, but I think it's two guys that are wing players for us. And I think Jalen Bridges and Langston love are both going to be, true leaders because they're going to I mean they're going to be focal points of the team offensively and defensively and I think that they will be able to bring the viewpoint of you know Jalen had some tough times at West Virginia Mm -hmm. came to Baylor early round exit Langston obviously terrible like the ACL his uh, freshman year and then last year was a part of the Creighton bounce like got to watch the UNC bounce so they have the we don't want this feeling again i think that they can bring that mentality to the team and be those be those emotional leaders and like true locker room leaders as well as contribute on the court um so that's kind of my answer i think like floor general court leader ray j we've been here experience steady from national championship on everyday john and then like true locker room guys that are going to be like yo like let's get this stuff right Mm-hmm. Because we've had disappointing seasons and disappointing college experiences in some case, yeah. Jalen and Langston. Like Jalen had an offer to go play professional basketball in Australia. He chose to come mm-hmm. back. He had an offer to go to the league that has produced tons of NBA players. He chose sure. to come back. Why? I think it's because he knows he's going to be that guy. And and I wonder if that I don't know if unrest is the right word because I certainly mm-hmm. don't feel this way and I don't necessarily feel it around the the fan base, but 
It's like if they go out and have a, a carbon copy of last season, which was a good mm. season, but you go out, you lose in the second round again. That's three straight years after winning the national championship. There's there's some questions there. I mean, it's not fire the coach, obviously, but it's like, no. why aren't we getting back to that? We have the talent. We've got the conference. Yeah. Why are we not getting back to that? So I'm wondering if there will be some sort of that mentality with the players too, of like, we were better than the second round two years ago. We were better than the second round last year. These are the things that we got to do to get there. Yeah, Hoping. I think so. I mean, the two years ago, second round exit, like UNC might've been the best eight seed of all time. For sure. I like, mean, that was, I don't, that it wasn't was a, a wacky. fluke that they lost that game, but it was as weird as you could get to have them in the second round and to come back from 20, have your worst shooting day of probably I mean, like, the year game was come all the way back. Schizophrenic. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Nuts. The game was Jekyll and Hyde, like completely schizophrenic. Like it was insane. Um, yeah. But the last year, I mean, at that point, Creighton probably was a better team at that yeah. point. Um, and the matchups. Like we coming were just yeah. The matchup total. was terrible for them. Yeah. It was, it was a pain. Um, so yeah, I think that there's a sense of that. And like, I, I wonder too, you brought up the coaching. It's never going to be a fire the coach scenario with Scott right, Drew. Never. Like he has this job as long as he wants it, as he should, as he should. Yeah. Does that does that say that we're not allowed to say, "Hey, interesting decision"? No, I don't think that that's fair, um, and I don't think we can be blind to that. But I feel like Scott Drew is all has always done a good job in game coaching and recruiting. Sure. Last year, I do wonder though, like the guys that are still on the bench are incredible. But I do wonder how much of an impact not having Jerome Tang in the huddle had on that team yeah, not well, being able to, to make wonder. as many in-game yeah. adjustments as we've seen before. Like, how many times would we go to halftime down? We came out and it was like, oh my god, completely different game plan. It was frequent when Tang yeah. was there, and so I think that's a huge thing too. Like Scott had to learn how to not coach with his best friend. Like that's right, and, and, and there was a fact. clear drop in, you know, I don't. I don't want to say drop in intensity because that makes the players sound bad, but like there just wasn't that dog on the defensive end. Yeah, And we I don't know how much of that tiger. was Tang or how much of that was just the cycle of, of what mm -hmm. it is, but this was a yeah. different looking Baylor team than the one that had succeeded the three or four years before yeah. that. So I, I think we're what gonna you see at the makeup, we're going to see that again. Some of, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I think with some of the guys that we have, so Dan Twan, not, be, you know, taking the red shirt year last year, like, People forget he exists because yes. well, not really, but like because of <laughs> no, some people shirt. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are like naming the guards and I'm like, Dantuan was slated to be a rotation guy before yeah. they were like, Hey, like take the red shirt. Right. Um, almost to like save him. Like he was going to be out most of the year, but he, he was filthy in global yeah. jam. Like he yes. was absolutely disgusting. His athleticism was crazy dog on defense. Jaden Nunn, dog on defense. Like I think that mentality is going to be back. Jacoby Walters, who, was is our highest recruit like we've gone this entire pod and haven't really talked about jacoby or eve or <laughs> miro like jacoby everyone's like incredible wing defender lockdown nba defender potential and it's like okay so that he's going to be a dog on defense and what if he gives us eight points a game ten points a game like so i i think the defensive identity is going to come back for sure <sighs> i really question. hope so is that the key yeah. to this team is bringing that identity back I don't. I mean, I, I don't know if I can say that. I haven't seen the team play. We have no idea. Yeah, that's to, true. That's fair. That's fair. I, I think there are I think a bunch of new names too. It's not like you're running it yeah. totally back. I think that I think the key to this team is like is truly just going to be our like how many times did we watch last year or when you watch? I'm not even just talking about last year's Baylor team. When you watch any college basketball team and they look they look disgruntled with each other. They look like people are eye rolling. People are trying to get theirs. We didn't see that super often with last year's team, but it, it existed. Yeah. If this team made up of new guys, new faces can play cohesive together basketball, the defensive identity will follow because the defensive sure. breakdowns were not due to lack of talent last year. It was lack right. of communication and guys being on the same page. So I truly think the key is just like cohesion and like, do we love playing basketball with each other? Yes or no. And do we, are we in this together and unselfish? Yes or no. And if the answer to both of those is yes, I think a, like final four is very in the question. Yes. You get me excited now. I'm so Let's bring man. that back. Brandon, yeah. thank you so much for joining the show today. Always appreciate Thanks, it. Like I said, we're going to see a lot of Brandon in the future. We're going to be breaking down this team left, right, and center, and I can't wait because we are such a basketball school. It's not even funny. Thank you yeah. for making it your first listen today and every day. We'll be back tomorrow with a little more football. This has 13 been, days, always, baby. will be 13 days. locked on Baylor.